Hi, it's Carolyn. I'm here to help you learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes. And in this video, I want to give you 10 things that I wish that I knew before I started my cake decorating business. And these are in no specific order, so let's get right into it with tip number one. And that is, it is so important for you to first perfect your cake recipes before you even think about starting to sell your cakes. And you've heard it time and time again that some cakes can look really beautiful and taste horrible. And I think it's more important for your cake to taste good and moist. I'm not gonna feel weird when I say moist. I gotta stop that, I'm over that. <laughs> but it's very important for the cake to taste very good and moist, even if the decorations aren't perfect, rather than having a perfect cake that tastes really dry. So over the past 22 years, I have perfected my recipe. I know how to bake the cakes correctly so they aren't dry. And shameless little plug here, I do have a few recipe eBooks available and I'm gonna link them in the description. I have my best doctored cake mix recipes, my favorite buttercream icing recipes, and also my signature pound cake recipe. So you can download them in a PDF format. And these are the recipes that I have perfected over the past 22 years that I've been making cakes. On to number two. Cake decorating is not as easy as people think, both the decorating side and the running, running the business. I've actually had so many customers who decided to make their own cake and contact me afterwards and say, oh my gosh, I didn't realize how hard this was. I'm so sorry, I have so much of an, I have so much more of an appreciation for what you do because I didn't realize that it's this hard. Now, not all designs are difficult, but in order to get your cakes to look nice and crisp and clean, it does take a little bit of skill. And I have tons of videos showing you that entire process and I'm gonna link some of them in the description for you. But there's a lot of time that must be invested to hone in on your skill and really improve. And then on the business side, you have to run it like a business. You're just not doing it as a hobby. So you have to take care of the tax paperwork. You have to pay your estimated taxes. You have to keep track of your miles. So there's a lot more that goes into it than you may really think. The third thing that I wish I knew before I started a cake business and that is that there is a natural ebb and flow to the business. And I feel like any business really does have an ebb and flow, but I used to, and I still do. <laughs> I'm not gonna say used to, I still do get nervous from December to February because those are my slowest months, that and July. And it's just natural because there's the holidays, people are on vacation, nobody's really ordering custom cakes in the dead of winter unless there is a birthday, but there's no graduations. There's not a lot of weddings, you know, so my revenue does take a dip in the winter months. So it's very important to set aside money during the busy time so you have it to get you through the times when it's slow. And I just have a savings account that I like to just set some money aside, that way I can easily transfer it if I need it. On to the fourth thing I wish I knew before I started my cake business. And that is that you are always working. Most people think that you are just baking and decorating cakes, but that's not the extent of it. Once the cakes are baked and decorated, I have to take the pictures of them, I have to text the people the pictures, I have to wrap them up and box them up, I have to schedule pickup and delivery, I have to email customers who are inquiring about future cakes, I have to shop for the next week's cakes, I have to keep my paperwork in check for my taxes. So really, I never have a day off, there's always something for me to do. If I'm not making the cakes, I'm answering emails or shopping or doing something else. So you have to learn how to budget your time wisely. On to the fifth thing that I wish I knew before I started my cake decorating business. And that is you do not have to do everything. I always say this in my videos, find your thing, find something that you love to do and you can get really good at it and make that your thing. With me, it is smooth buttercream ice cakes and two dimensional fondant decorations. When I first started, I thought I had to make 3D decorations. I thought that that's what was required when you made a cake. So I'll find some pictures of some old cakes that I made with some 3D decorations on it and I just, I was miserable when I was making them. Some of them look good, some of them do not look good, but I just don't like making 3D decorations. I also don't like making flowers. I don't even make specialty cake flavors like tiramisu. 
I don't make sponge cakes. I don't make Italian meringue buttercream. I found what works for me and I stick with that. And because I do that, then I become known for a certain design aesthetic and that's what attracts my customers to me. So you don't have to know how to do every single thing when it comes to cake decorating. Find what you love about it and stick with that. On to number six. And that is not everything will always go your way when you are making cakes. And it is unfortunate, but mistakes are inevitable. However, I have learned the most from the mistakes that I have made. From the very beginning, I remember when I didn't know to dowel the cake into the cake drum. I went on a delivery and the cake almost slid off the cake board. So then I had to learn how to properly stack the cakes. I put the wrong name on a cake before and somebody came to pick it up and the name was wrong. So now I always text a picture to the customer the day before they come pick it up or I deliver the cake to make sure that I get their approval. I've even been stood up for cakes before. I made an entire cake back in the day when I would collect cash <laughs> and I have made cakes before where people don't even show up and then I'm out all of that money in time. So now I have policies in place where the cake must be paid for in full 10 days prior to pickup or delivery. I am not making a cake unless it's completely paid for. And the reason that I have these policies in place is because I have made the mistakes in the past and learned from them. So I always say, whenever you go through something undesirable in your cake business, just try to find the lesson in it. And that's how we improve. On to number seven. And this kind of goes with the last one of making mistakes is that you need to let go of perfectionism. And I don't know if you're anything like me, but I used to take like an hour trying to fix a, a decoration that was a little off center or a little crooked or readjust everything to make it look nice and perfect. And I remember my mom said to me one day, she's like, I did not even notice that nobody notices you are picking it apart and you're wasting your time for very minute details. And I get it, we all want our cakes to look perfect, but what I have perfected is being able to trick the eye and make it look like the cakes are perfect when they're really, there's flaws in all of my cakes, I'm just able to hide them. For example, I just made a Minecraft cake and the very back of the cake, the squares didn't line up, that's why I made it the back of the cake. I've had fondant tear in the very front of the cake, so I just took a little sign, a happy birthday sign, and I covered the tear up. So there's ways to work around these perceived flaws in your cakes, and you just have to be okay with them not being perfect. On to the eighth thing I wish I knew before I started my cake business, and that is to understand your customer's value and be able to accept any criticism. And I have to say, sometimes it's very hard to take a look in the mirror and realize that you are the problem. But we are humans, we are not perfect. And like I said, everything is not always going to go your way. So when you have issues with customers, and I have a few videos talking about this and I will link it in the description. But when you have issues with customers, you want to take your time and respond to them and try to find a solution rather than just automatically react, tell them they're wrong, they're, they're saying you're wrong, you guys are button heads and you get nothing solved. So it's important to take criticism constructively so you're able to improve. On to number nine, and that is you do not have to follow these rules that are set by the industry. So when I first started, I used to make all of my cakes from scratch and I found that a lot of people were complaining that it was dry, they didn't really like the taste. Now I know I was a beginner and I didn't really perfect my recipes yet. However, that's when I started to switch over to a doctored cake mix recipe. And that was blasphemy in the cake industry and I felt ashamed at first because you're not allowed to use a cake mix if you sell cakes. And I think that's a bunch of BS because many bakeries do and there are many bakers out there now that now who do. And like I said before, I have an ebook with all of my favorite Dr. Cake Mix recipes in it. I have found that once I started using Dr. Mix recipes that my customers were raving about the taste and the texture and everybody loved it. So I always tell people don't feel ashamed if you use a cake mix. There's nothing wrong with using a cake mix as a base and then adding other ingredients to it to make it your own. And also there's other rules like you can only use pure vanilla extract and the best ingredients. You know me, 
I love me some Wilton Clear Vanilla. And I, I hope this is back in stock soon. I don't know what, what's taken so long. But this stuff is so good. I'm telling you, I love it. All of my customers love it. Everybody loves this stuff. So yeah, I use a clear imitation vanilla flavoring for a lot of my cakes and my icings. And oh my gosh. It's sometimes I just pour a little bit in a pot with water and boil it and it makes my house smell like vanilla, but anyway. <laughs> and also there's a weird rule that you're not supposed to put fondant cakes in the refrigerator. And I don't understand where that came from. I have literally been putting all of my cakes Fondant cakes, buttercream cakes, cakes with edible images, everything goes in the refrigerator. I've been doing it like that for over 20 years. So you just need to learn how to work with cakes once you bring them out of the refrigerator to help reduce the chances of condensation forming on the cakes. And I do have videos talking about that and I'm gonna link that down in the description. But don't listen to these rules that are set up by the industry. You find what works for you and you stick with that. On to the 10th thing that I wish I knew before I started my cake decorating business. And that is you can make your own rules. Do not let other people dictate how you should run your business. And it's a lot easier said than done. So for a few examples, I will say is collecting payment. I have strict policies in place where I collect a deposit to get into my book and then the balance is due 10 days prior to pickup or delivery. I rarely make exceptions on that just because I have been burned so many times. I actually had a girl come and pick up a cake before and she tried to Venmo me the balance and Venmo was down. It wasn't working for some reason. So she sat in her car and gave me an attitude. She's like, you see, I'm trying to pay you on Venmo. It's not working. And I'm like, okay, well I need the payment before I give you the cake. And she fought with me. She like screamed at me and I ended up, I hate, I hate that I'm like this. <laughs> I ended up giving her the cake. She didn't send me the balance for another two weeks because I think she was trying to teach me a lesson. But this is why I have strict policies in place. I'm never going to let anybody else dictate and tell me how to run my business when it comes to collecting payments. And also another example is pickup times. I personally work from home and I don't wanna sit around all day waiting for someone to come. It has happened before in the past. People will text you on my way and then four hours later they show up. They're like, oh, I had to go to Target. I had to go get gas. I stopped at my mom's house. I had to pick up the food. You wanna tell me that? <laughs> So in order to prevent that from happening, I have strict pickup windows for my cakes. So it's usually on Saturdays between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. Sometimes if I'm home, I can work with time flexibility, but I try to stick to a specific schedule and I tell people that I'm leaving at one o'clock. I'm gonna be out of here at one. You better come get your cake before one or else you're not gonna be able to get it because I'm not gonna be here. And it, and it gives like a sense of urgency. That way it prevents people from, I don't wanna say disrespecting, but I just don't think that people value your time as much as you do. So you make your rules and don't allow anyone else to dictate how you run your business, how you price your cakes. It's all up to you. So that's my list of 10 things. What else would you have on your list of things that you wish that you knew before you started a cake decorating business? I'd love to know. Leave it in the comments below. And just a reminder, I do have a Cake Academy membership program where I can help you elevate your cakes to the next level. All of that information will be listed in the description. Please like this video if you liked it. And if you're enjoying my tutorials, I would be so grateful if you could buy me a coffee. My link is down below. And I would love it if you would keep a touch on socials and you could check out my website. And if you want to stick around, you can watch this video next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And remember, it's cake, have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.